There are three things I would like to make in my presentation. Uh, the first point, uh, as you know, uh, some of you have already mentioned, have already known, or have already touched upon the issues of South China Sea, the serious challenges to peace, stability, security in the region. That affects you know, not only Southeast Asia, East Asia, but the entire world in general. So I will not uh, go into details on that. Uh, my first point is about uh, uh, Hong Fong has asked me you know, to talk about the South China Sea as the limous state for ASEAN. But in my view, uh, first point, I would like to say that you know, uh, South China Sea is no longer a limo state for ASEAN. It has already been a real tremendous challenge to regional peace, stability, to the safety of maritime navigation, to ASEAN unity and solidarity. And ASEAN cannot claim itself as a security community if ASEAN is unable to speak one voice on South China Sea, is unable to manage the disputes that uh, is to affect our region. So this is my first point. Uh, my second, in my second point, I'm to talk about the interconnections between ASEAN consensus and ASEAN centrality. As you have already known, the ASEAN consensus is of crucial importance for ASEAN centrality and vice versa. Without centrality, ASEAN is unable to maintain consensus, as many experiences you know, in the past have already shown that. So there are two related uh, points to that. First, uh, as South China Sea directly affects the uh, regional security, stability, and interests of many countries, many stakeholders inside and outside the region. So if ASEAN is unable to maintain unity and consensus, the grouping will be divided, it will be weakened, it will gradually be losing its centrality role. Secondly, over the past years, ASEAN itself has established uh, several mechanisms to, for conversations, for talks on security issues in the region, particularly the South China Sea, such as the AIF, the uh, ADMM Plus, the EAS, among the other. So in these forums, ASEAN plays central role in uh, talking about the South China Sea issue, in shaping norms, guidelines, agendas for countries you know, inside and outside the region to uh, uh, touch upon the issue. So ASEAN will be losing its central role if ASEAN is unable to uh, maintain unity and consensus on South China Sea in these forums. And now I come to my third point. As I have mentioned about the interconnection between consensus and centrality, the consensus first among ASEAN claimants and then between ASEAN claimants and the non claimants. The consensus should, in my view, both reflect positions and interests of 
individual ASEAN members, though these positions and interests have become more and more diverse. On the other hand, ASEAN positions should also reflect the concerns of some member states which are directly affected by the disputes, such as you know, the four ASEAN claimants. And, that, and ASEAN positions also reflect the concerns of the international community in which ASEAN is part of. And I think that there are at least six common denominators, among others, that ASEAN should uphold and maintain. One, maintain peace and stability in the region. And ASEAN should continue to raise the issue in various forums in which ASEAN plays you know, a pivotal role, such as you know, uh, AMM, ADMM, ADMM Plus, AIF, EAS, among the others. Uh, two, maintain safety and uh, maintain safety of air overfly and maritime navigation in the region. Three, uh, respect the ruling of the International uh, Tribunal for the Law of the Sea uh, delivered July last year, which rejected the nine uh, the historical uh, the historic claims of the nine dash line uh, for implement the international law such as the unclothes of the 1982 uh, to manage the dispute. Five, uh, stop constructing new structures in the South China Sea and militarizing of the uh, uh, South China Sea. And finally, full implementation of the DOC and move toward to the early conclusion of the COC. It is not an easy task for ASEAN to uphold and maintain the, uh, these positions, these uh, common positions. And challenges for ASEAN is to uphold the uh, consensus of ASEAN countries, which has diverging interests, particularly among the ASEAN claimants and the non-claimants. From the outside, uh, ASEAN have to cope with the interventions from countries outside the region, which have no interest or have little interest you know, in ASEAN's unity. I think you know, partly have mentioned in uh, Bilahari's uh, presentation. But not, you know, uh, they don't want ASEAN, you know, uh, unity in all other aspects, but at least, you know, ASEAN's unity in the South China Sea issue. And ASEAN also has to work to balance the diverging interests of the powers of countries, of stakeholders, you know, outside the region. And there are several issues you know, that uh, should be taken for granted. Uh, the South China Sea is a sea that once you know, is seen as you know, the sea that separates ASEAN. But South China Sea is also the sea that should be seen you know, as uh, an ocean that you know, holds us together, that all ASEAN countries you know, have a <coughs> share destiny. In the past uh, 50 years ago, when ASEAN was founded, the issues of reason history, the issue of existence, you know, that was embedded in the mind of our four grandfathers. And that came to the birth of ASEAN, which we celebrate, you know, it's the 50th anniversary today. So we think that in the next 50 years, you know, 
the issue of Russian history will still be an issue that ASEAN you know, should be reminded of. Thank you so much.